produced out of Italy. I'm sort of just waiting for the other countries to sort of implode. Um, yeah, it's been quite a week. So let's start with the UK. Remind us where we were when this week started. Good evening from Downing Street, where Boris Johnson, one of the most launch workout politicians of modern times, has launch taken workout as Prime Minister from Theresa May. Standing in Downing Street, launch workout. Get your ball. Where's the ball? Come on, Sabrina. Sabrina, keep your ball. Sabrina. Whatever the circumstances, and to do otherwise would cause a catastrophic loss of confidence in our political system. Okay, so the situation is that Boris Johnson needs to deliver Brexit finally. We've got a deadline, October 31st. You know, the deadline was extended twice. This now seems to be the hard deadline. And he's got nine weeks to deliver this promise to take Britain out of the European Union. Basically, there are two ways of doing that. Either you cut a deal with Brussels, with the other 27 countries in the European Union, and figure out a way to make this kind of work seamlessly, or you don't cut a deal, in which case you kind of crash out of this block, meaning that you have a situation of total chaos. This no-deal Brexit scenario is basically something that most lawmakers want to avoid. Right, and that's why there were scenes of Theresa May trying and failing to pass a deal Brexit through Parliament over and over again in these really embarrassing stumbles. Correct. She failed three times, and then she resigned. And now, Boris Johnson has made it very clear that he stands for a Brexit on October 31st, do or die, as he put it. Mm. And we're going to fulfill the repeated promises of Parliament to the people. Deal or no deal. And come out of the EU on October the 31st. That's his objective. No ifs or buts. So... This was kind of the situation we were in. Everybody was wondering, what's he going to do with this? And then he did something that nobody expected. He suspended Parliament. It is a move that will make it easier for Johnson to force the country's exit from the European Union without a deal in place. Critics say this is a constitutional crisis. Supporters say it's standard practice. What does it actually mean? So he's dealing with a Parliament that not only hasn't been able to agree on anything, there's no majority for any deal that's been proposed. He's dealing with a parliament that tried to oust him at one point. Mm. And he's dealing with a parliament where various opposition parties are now finally making common cause to basically pass legislation to stop a no-deal Brexit from happening, mm. which would limit his options and basically risk for him not to be able to deliver on his promise which is Brexit, come what may. So there's this thing called proroguing. It's a very British thing. If you prorogue Parliament, you basically suspend it temporarily. And he's basically cut down the time that Parliament has in session to debate Brexit from five weeks to less than three weeks. By cutting the timetable, Johnson is making it much less likely that these people will actually come to an agreement and get in this way and get in his way. In a way, it's made it almost impossible for anyone to challenge his promise to leave the European Union on October 31st. So Johnson is trying to severely limit the role of the legislative branch of the British government in what is arguably the most consequential process it has gone through in decades. How on earth is that possible? The crazy thing is it's totally possible. Most people think it entirely within the bounds of Britain's uh, famously unwritten constitution. Mm. And he got it approved by the Queen. And that allowed him to go ahead. So that's all it takes. Ask the Queen, suspend Parliament. That's all it takes. Mm. So does that mean the Queen supports this plan? No, it doesn't mean that she supports it. It's basically a formality in Britain. That part is normal. But what isn't normal is the timing and the way that he sort of did this in a way that looks very much politically motivated. And, you know, this is not necessarily illegal. There may be legal challenges, but a lot of people think he'll get away with it. Mm -hmm. But it's sneaky. And it's kind of undermining trust in the institutions and reinforcing the sense that democracy is not working. Mm -hmm. And that could become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So he's kind of playing with fire. 
it's extremely brazen. And I wonder how people, especially people who serve in parliament, have responded. They're not happy. <laughs> people basically accuse him of staging a coup, shutting down parliament in order to force through a no deal Brexit, which will do untold and lasting damage to the country against the wishes of MPs is not democracy, it's dictatorship. They say he's acting like a king. He's taking away fundamental democratic rights and disabling parliament. Suspending parliament is not acceptable. It's not all. What the Prime Minister is doing is a sort of smash and grab on our democracy. People have been marching in the streets. The bottom line of all of this is that people are saying this is deeply undemocratic. It's not for an unelected Prime Minister to shut down the elected parliament to ram through a no deal for which he has no democratic mandate. I mean, the scale of what he's doing strikes me as the equivalent of the President of the United States in the middle of the immigration debate, for example, something as divisive as Brexit, just somehow suspending Congress and putting his plan for a border wall in action and saying, I, I don't need you, you're in the way. It's not a bad analogy because Johnson is saying, I'm not undemocratic, you guys are. And I suspect that's probably what Trump would say. He'd say, the people voted for me, I promised a wall. So this is democracy. Well, Johnson is basically saying the people voted for Brexit, so I'm the man to deliver it. And if Parliament is going to stand in the way, then Parliament is undemocratic.